So I'm Rebecca Bradley, this is the Virtual Crime Book Club and this month we are discussing Three Hours by Rosamond Lupton. There will be spoilers, so anybody that is watching this on playback on YouTube, um, be aware if you haven't read the book then there's going to be spoilers within the uh, video, so uh, do be aware and maybe read it before you watch this. Hi Marina! Hello, sorry I'm a bit late. <laughs> no, it's fine, we've not done anything yet, I've just made the introductions. Okay, great. So, introductions made, first question is, did you enjoy the book? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. much. Really good, yeah. 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 I thought it would be a resounding yes, to be honest, and I think it's one of those books that we're going to have quite a lot to talk about. Yes. Well, so I enjoyed it really, but I found it interesting. You didn't I found enjoy it. Very it. Interesting. Um, well, in, in, not in a sense of. Um, I found it just you know disturbing and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. But I found it very interesting and I found it very compelling. Mm. Everybody that enjoyed it, what did? What about it? What was it about the book that you liked or found interesting? I liked the way she was able to combine an emotional story with an action story because I think you often don't get the two together but when it started off it was very emotional and it was these sort of mini character sketches and then at sort of the halfway point you've got the whole police um, situation kicking off and it's it's really it seemed really authentic and quite um, fast paced so I thought it was quite nice that she'd managed to blend the two really. I like the fact that I cared about the characters. I mean, that makes such a difference when you're, um, you actually care what's happening to them and you're rooting for them and, and you want to know what's going to happen to them. And that I really wanted to spend time with them and I was really worried that they weren't going to get out alive and things like that. So she made you care. I thought she did that um, just following on. <laughs> I was about to call you Bob. Yes, uh, sorry. I mean, just on my husband's computer, I've just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought she did that, you know, really uh, straight off. That, you know, made the characters re feel really human, uh, you know, to the reader immediately. And, um, you know, with those little kind of vignettes, sort of uh, flashback things that she did, um, you know, I felt that she very quickly got me, you know, really, really invested um, in sort of each of the characters as she switched from what's sort at of one point of view to another I found myself you know really really caught up in their story. Yeah I quite like the relationship they had between like the mother and the son uh, and quietly talking or, or the thoughts that were going through their head really from an early stage I absolutely mm. adore that switching between the characters and then having that within it as well. Jamie's mum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. What were your thoughts on Jamie's mum's role in the book? I thought it was done really well actually because mm. I really bought into those first few chapters where she um you know where she was sort of talking in her head to him and I, I was quite worried about him to be honest. Mm. And it wasn't until um she said something about um she'd read his diary and the girl it was over with this girl and that's when i thought oh hang on a minute i think this whole thing is going to change now so it was quite it was quite upsetting really to see her going from being so concerned and thinking oh my god he's been hurt to actually her being told that he's the one behind it i thought it was done really well yeah i also really liked that um they had all uh, sort of all ages, you know, so we had the kids in the school and the little junior school and, um, you know, them doing their little sort of pottery and, um, you know, that was just so sweet while all this, mm -hmm. while all this madness was kind of going on around them. Um, and then you had the sort of the teenagers, the little sort of teenage lovers, um, Hannah and Raph, is it Raffy? You know, like we're sort of running through the woods having their little secret kiss a thorn or whatever they were doing. And you know, that was really cute. And then you had the adults and then the sort of parents. And um, I just thought it was really nice, sort of multi generation y without being a sort of saga y. Mm. 
Yeah, and very hard to do, you know, to keep all that going because it, it was like, um, I sort of felt it was like uh, you were sort of watching a, a documentary or something like the camera just panning around and sort of picking up on different people in different places and that's so hard I would think to be able to, you know, to, to make them all equally compelling. Mm. Yeah, and and some very clever plot twists as well, because um, um, you said, Lisa, that you kind of felt as soon as with the diary and, oh, but, you know, she wasn't really his girlfriend or something, and that you suspected yeah. something. With me, it caught me completely by surprise. I, I kept thinking, something's wrong, something's wrong, but that he would actually be more the victim of the other one because he had turned his back on him as a friend or something like that, rather than that he was the co um, culprit and then with the policeman mm. it out wasn't yeah. the policeman yeah. oh my goodness mm -hmm. i was just yeah so so there were these things where i usually am very suspicious of anybody and anything but somehow i think because we were so invested in the character she managed to mislead us really well um, yeah at least me yeah yeah although i thought that some of the um reveals were, were a little bit slow so like you know when we got to the point where she kind of finally told us that um jamie alton you know was the second person mm. you know i kind of thought oh yeah, my god <laughs> yeah, yeah sort of i figured that one out yeah yeah it wasn't really very much about the third one though the third person yeah. we really didn't get to know much about that person I mean, we didn't even know whether or not he existed um for for uh, quite most of the book and not really till the end That's that you true. realize that there is a third um terrorist but uh, I, I felt then a little bit cheated i wanted to know about him what you know how he'd got involved mm. it was very subtly done with the um twig snapping the sound of the um yeah yeah gun yes very subtle yeah i i um that I mean, the, the the policeman is the third terrorist that really threw me. Mm -hmm. I picked out Jamie fairly early on, but the, the, the third policeman absolutely threw me. But I, I had to read it twice at the end to find out what happened to him because it was such a short sentence. When when you when you what, what actually happened to him? What I happened did the same to thing. I read the, that twice as well. <laughs> The fact that he'd been dead from the start, from driving up yeah. to the gatehouse. Yeah, yeah. And that I got, and and and, but it was, it was the terrorist. What happened to the terrorist at the end? Because it was like the twig snap, twig snap, twig snap, and then before you know it, the the real police are walking through the door. It's like, hold on, did I miss something? You know, I have to go back. It was, oh I, I, you know, I, I really liked it. I could, it kind of really gripped me. Yeah disappointed with the characterization of the deputy head um i thought that was a very weak point at the moment at the beginning of course he was uh against everything that the headmaster was trying to do and then when he had a chance to do anything he was just very hesitant and i don't think that fitted in with the character he was trying to portray i mean that's not a criticism of the whole book i enjoyed the book but um to me that was quite a weak point was the deputy neil that's yeah. right yeah yeah. You kind of pulled it out the bag at the end, though. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. It. yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you say that, um, Norman, because I I didn't feel like that. I felt that that worked because um, mm. he'd been off on sick leave for depression. And um, I felt that maybe part of his, um, you know, he was kind of feeling his way back into the, mm. the role. And he said that, um, is it Martin, the, the, mm. um, the head, you know, hadn't completely sort of briefed him, I think, if I've read that mm. correctly, mm. or something like that. Anyway, and so no. I felt like maybe part of, um, yeah, his kind of inertia and, and uh, indecisiveness maybe was to do with his d depression. Um, and I, I liked the fact that, um, you know, he, at the end when it counted, when it mattered, you know, he did become sort of, you know, he seemed to really change and really find his footing. Um, and then, and I felt really pleased for him that he'd been able to sort of to do that. What did you think of, um, how did the story structure affect the story for you? You know, with the, how it married up with the play that they were rehearsing, 
how did that affect the story for you? Yeah, I thought the play was a little bit of an exaggeration. I mean, in reality, would they keep on rehearsing, even if to take their mind off things? That did feel a bit of, a, um, of an extreme example, just to kind of make the parallel between, you know, the, I agree. the yeah. corruption and the, mm. you know, the power corrupts kind of thing, or, you know, the, the uh, how, how you get... Um, told what to do or uh, you know with the witches and then the the extreme right or whatever it was that uh, um to to provoke a terrorist so i yeah that felt a bit far-fetched she definitely wants yeah. to marry the play up with the story mm. yes and i felt it was a little bit forced at times a little bit mm. yeah um, mm. it made it, it was there were some very interesting points as well that you got from it mm. And I sort of thought, you know, I wonder if this is an author. I don't know. I mean, I've read two of her books before and I really like her writing. But I don't actually know a huge amount about her, but it did make me think, oh, I wonder if this is an author who's done an English literature degree. Because they're actually, you know, a couple of other books could have, you know, we could have had those plots instead of Macbeth, really. But it was fine. I mean, yeah. It's kind of... uh, I just, I found those, um, you know, when she went into some of the speeches from Macbeth and stuff, I sort of did want to skip those a bit, though. <laughs> Um, just back, just talking about structure, um, Rebecca, which you asked about was, I wasn't really sure about the flashbacks because, um, you know, to start with, I said that I really liked them because I found them quite, um, you know, they really showed us a lot about the characters and um, they showed us a lot about the relationships between the characters and their backstory, you know, etc. But um, I, after a while, I quickly found them a little bit irritating um, and I wasn't sure if maybe there were kind of too many of them. We kept, kept going in and out of flashbacks and then back to sort of present day um i wasn't sure i couldn't completely decide i think maybe there were maybe there were too many of them i found there were a bit too many of them with raffi and bazzi and the flashbacks to their, their journey um that was a, a, the first yeah. couple were you know enlightening but i think they were a bit distracting after a while and a lot about the boat wasn't there really? yeah I, I found that really interesting because i think that was a sort of a subliminal message really in the in the uh, a novel regarding um, immigration and how it's treated. I mean, bringing up was it Katie Hopkins and Trump's tweets and things like that towards the end. Um, the way that we as a nation not quite like that. But I found it really interesting that the story of their journey. Um, and so I was all right with those flashbacks because I, I where, where are they now sort of touch, you know. I, I found that quite interesting. Yeah, I. I prefer that that was my favorite storyline actually was the brothers yeah but, and as you say because it did all tie in with the racism and um the other you know the other the racism on the other side as well i thought it helped to make feasible that raffi was kind of the action hero he was the one who spotted the bomb he was the one who knew not to open the boat shed door and i think it was because of his experience and we saw his experience and he drew parallels from that that made him more equipped to cope with the situation the sort of warlike situation that that school was suddenly in based on what had happened to him previously and i think it helped that we saw that to make it believable who was your favorite character out of um because there was quite a big cast of characters for this one. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a while to get figure out who everybody was and what their part in it was. Um, who, who did you connect with most out of it? On the periphery, I, I like the uh, infant teacher. The, 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 one the Camille, the pottery teacher. Mm -hmm. the pottery. Yeah. 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 yeah, I thought it was a very real person, came over exactly how someone like that you would hope would act in those circumstances and I felt a great deal of uh, sympathy and uh, understanding where she was concerned and that she was a peripheral character but uh, nevertheless I thought she was very very well placed and uh, illustrated by the author. Mm. I like Jamie's mum to be honest I don't know mm. if it's because I've got I've got a son the same mm. age or similar age so I, I found myself sort of thinking well that's actually quite frightening to think that you know yeah. your, your child inside out and then they do something like that and you realise you don't know them at all. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I found that quite 
not well what I say my kid's a good boy. He is a good boy as far as I know. But <laughs> um, I, found, I found it a bit close to home. I think because of the age similarity yeah. and stuff, mm-hmm. I found it a bit, I found myself going back to it thinking, oh, well, what would I do? How would I feel? Yeah. Same as you, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, the following morning after I finished reading it, I was kind of hugging them extra tight and I was thinking, so when's the last time they talked? They said more than grunts, you know? <laughs> And, and my younger son brings me cups of tea, and I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> I wish my boy had a cup of tea. <laughs> Speaking of characters, and then um, somebody just mentioned about you know Rappy being the action hero. One of the problems I had with the book was that um, for me there wasn't really a clear protagonist. Um, we mm. had quite a few points of view, points mm. of view, and um, kind of you know zipped in and out of those and I did care about the characters but something that was lacking for me was that I didn't have a a hero or a protagonist to root for um and I did find that sort of bothering me you know I I I said I did I you know started off by saying that I found the book interesting and compelling and I really did um but I wouldn't I didn't find it emotionally satisfying because of the lack of, of of a clear protagonist I don't know if anyone else found that. It's my standout book of the year, to be honest, that I've read so far. Yeah. Certainly the most memorable. I I quite liked, I think if it had been just one protagonist in in this particular case, because it affected the whole school and all age groups and parents and teachers and children alike, I think it would have had a very one-sided view, maybe. Mm. It would have been very difficult to pull off with just one, which potentially could have been the investigator. Mm. You know, or, but, but it would have been very, because they were all in different locations. So, Actually, I felt that it gained from having all of the different protagonists yeah. rather than just one main one. Yeah, I, I agree it did, but it did take me a little while to get into it, I think, yeah. because of that, mm-hmm. because that there wasn't, you know, I didn't immediately feel a connection with anyone. Although, as you said, I think, um, yeah, that the mother um, worrying about her child that was obviously that was the first thing for me I think the first time I got sort of I felt really drawn into it and then it got better and better and then I was really interested in the backstory of the two brothers um, but yeah it did take me a little while to get you could get into it anybody else that uh, you sorry, find interesting I, sorry yeah no I thought Hannah's character was very interesting yeah um because she was very caring um, with the headmaster yeah. but she was also trying to protect other people at the same time and mm. at the end she was very she wanted to know what had happened to him and all of that I, so I sort of quite attached myself to her at the beginning and yes, enjoyed reading nice her story quietly forceful wasn't yes. she? You know, she yes. didn't fall apart she carried on and she did so she was a very strong character in a very quiet way which yeah I that's it good. <laughs> I did enjoy her. Mm. And I liked the theatre, the drama teacher lady as well. You know, I thought she was um, just amazing. Um, you know, the way that she carried on, um, you know, getting these kids to do this um, dress rehearsal. And um, I really liked her. And then when she has that okay. moment, when she realises that she has been encouraging and helping Victor to perfect yeah. his... Yeah. Uh, um, yes. you know his his false image you know that that was just you know you could you could see in fact I thought all of the teachers were really very well done probably a bit idealized you know almost too heroic and too um, loving and caring for their children I, I don't know if <laughs> under those circumstances but on the other hand you do hear with school shootings you do hear about um, teachers protecting the children and so yeah I actually loved it that they had all those multiple points of view I thought it was like really trying to manage the situation in real time you'd be thinking oh but what about them over there and what's happening down the road in the library and oh my goodness what about those poor kids in the pottery room and everything going on would just felt very real the way it was done I think it wasn't for me that um, I didn't mind there being multiple points of view. You know, I liked that and completely agree that it added a lot. Um, it was just, I think, um, the lack of there being a clear 
protagonist that I was sort of to you know really root for yeah I think quite often with that when there's multiple points of view you normally have one character don't you that you're like oh I can't wait to get back to their bit I can't wait to find out what they're doing and I, I agree with you to some extent that there, it was I didn't have that one person that I was like I'm desperate to know what's happening to them but I felt kind of equally invested in all of them I think for me the two biggest characters that I was most interested in were um what was her name rose Poulstein and raffi mm. the uh, the police inspector mm. and, uh, yeah. and raffi i think i would have put those two as the two leads yeah i think i would as well although i i liked all the characters i thought she did a really good job of making me invest in everybody um because normally i find when i start a book and you invest in a character and then about chapter three, you, you switch to another character's viewpoint. You think, oh, I was really enjoying that. And that happened a little bit with this because Hannah featured quite prominently to start with. And then we switched all over the place. But I, I liked it. it she, she had a real knack for making you care, well, making me care about all those characters. She just revealed enough about them to keep me interested. Yeah. It's been touched on slightly, but how did the book make you feel? anxious actually yeah it's going back to that same thing of like having teenage kids and you don't always know what they're doing and you send them to school and you think they're safe I mean my kids at their secondary school they have they do a lockdown drill for if someone comes in really yeah, yeah. and I'll yeah. Say. <laughs> and I don't live like in a really badass place I live in Maidstone <laughs> so it's not like <laughs> it's a terrible place to live but it's mm -hmm. I found the whole the whole situation that they were in it made it did make me feel quite anxious actually see my boys both went to and one still goes to a school set in sort of a parkland with lots of trees and woodland and the, the school spread out so I really connected with the uh, imagery that they were they were portraying in the book because all I kept thinking about was on oh, school, on oh, school, you know, constantly when I was reading it, and it did really pull me in. And but I thought she was she was very good at making um, sort of it really uh, enhancing the sense of um, sort of isolation because um, you know I, well, I didn't realise until she, they said that the evacuation point was you know on the beach and they had to go down this you know path down this cliff to assemble on the beach and. You know, so I just thought, oh my gosh, and then plus, you know, with the storm and the snow and winter and, um, you know, it, I really felt the kind of claustrophobia of that setting and that they were, you know, kind of really, really very trapped with these two, you know, these two gunmen in the school. And yeah, I think that the setting worked really well for me. My oldest is just about to go to high school and his school is nothing like that you know it's it's on a main road and there's none of that isolation there but she, but she really did bring that to life the, the idea that I mean for me I send my kids to school and think they're safe but actually in that area you know they're so isolated that if something like that did happen I mean god it, it was anxiety as a parent that I felt reading the reading the book and I think the setting added to that because of you know, this need to get them down to the beach to get a boat to get to safety and it, it, it she did it very well for for me anyway in terms of the setting mm -hmm. and what about the ending were you satisfied with the ending it felt not totally bit rushed. it felt mm -hmm. a tiny bit rushed to me it suddenly you know wham bam it was all sort of over um and the you know the I like the idea of the children walking through the trees, being walking trees and distracting yeah. things, but I'm not mm. entirely sure I managed to, to suspend disbelief. Yeah, that, um, I also, I, I liked that and thought there was something, yeah, just very creative and sort of magical about that. Um, I, wasn't com I wasn't sure about the little sort of chats about love, um, you know, the headmaster and his thing about, um you know love being i found that a bit disconcerting the first time he said it that you know love's the most important thing or whatever and then you know he told us how much he loved this uh, raffi and his deputy head and you know and 
stuff and I find that a little bit cheesy. Um, and there's a few other aspects of the ending for me. Um, I did like lots of different parts of it, but I felt some of it was a little bit neat. So, for example, the ship swooped in, the armed cops swooped in and then just shot the two gunmen. And for me, that was a little bit, I wanted more of it to come from the characters. And I think this is something also that, that sort of lines up with, for me, um, with there not being a kind of a clear protagonist. So lots of people contributed to the school being saved and the children being safely evacuated. Um, but it just felt a little bit too neat. Um, and that sort of, you know, an external force kind of came in and sort of saved the day, really, with these two armed cops shooting the gunman, effectively. I would have liked it to have come from a couple of the key characters. Do you think that um, they captured the spirit of Desmond as a, a psychopath? I mean, he would really act in that particular manner. And I, I didn't think enough emphasis was given to the fact that... Uh, really what had built up to his things, how he managed to uh, be uh, brainstormed as it were by uh, and, and to become as he did. I didn't think that came out very well and he was of course one of the main characters and to me I didn't feel that was particularly satisfying. Also the headmaster's reaction when he discovered what it was like just expelling him, not telling any of the members of the staff, uh, bearing in mind it's an isolated school and he was expelling him for potential trouble. That, that um, you know, it's only a small point, but I think that could have been worked on to me to make that a little more realistic. But the rest of it, I thought, was, it was really good, very, very inventive. Yeah, I felt that it was slightly a cop-out, you know, saying, well, he's a psychopath, you know, and that's why he doesn't need to have any more reason than that, um, you know, and he just enjoys manipulating others. And, uh, yeah, that, that did fe feel a bit... Um, yeah, too slight a reason, not explored enough. Yeah. I'm well, just I, coming on for Marina. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with that. Um, sort of that aspect of things. Um, but I do wonder if actually she was more interested in saying, telling Jamie's story because Jamie is the kind of nice guy that we all sort of think oh he can't possibly have a reason and that was very much the case for the Columbine uh, shooting wasn't it as well where people said not from a deprived background wasn't really a sort of uh, incel kind of person nice family and everything they all thought they knew him and so how did it come to that so I think that's what she was interested in exploring but it did feel like we weren't getting enough of the first person of the victor Mm. Oh, I think we've lost Vicky completely. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, she's probably logging out and logging back in. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I agree. I I thought they could have um, explored the fact of the um, uh, was it Victor? Victor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah psychopath. I thought they could, I, I thought they they kept saying, "Oh, we can't get his parents on another day in Chile or wherever they were." And, and that was really it. And it, it just said, oh, he's a psychopath. And I, I liked a little bit at the end when he was playing the games and is it Rose kept saying, I think it's not right, it's not right, there's something more to this. Um, I, I enjoyed that bit. But I would really have liked to have got to know him, got to know his background a bit better and, and you know, what, what, what the reason sitting behind all this rather than just he's a psychopath. But I loved it. <laughs> I must admit, I got a little bit um, lost, I think, with all of the viewpoints. And and I felt there was some of the author opi author's opinion there as well, which I found a little bit... I, th I felt it slowed the action a bit. Um, I think overall I enjoyed it, but I did, I mean, there was one bit that puzzled me, and I don't know if anybody can answer this. About page 60... Um, when just after the headmaster's been shot, he says he's, he he recognised the voice, and the voice said one word. And I think I must have missed what that word was because I I was collaborators. Collaborators. Oh, collaborators. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, I missed that bit. Where was that? Right at the end. Pretty close. Once the, we find out who who the gunmen are, both of them. 
yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you've certainly done a lot of research for it. Um, I looked up some of the names, you know, of the, of the terrorist organisations and things, and uh, mm. yeah, she certainly went in into a lot. I like the way, just kind of going back to the psychopathy thing and or following on from that, is, um, you know, that she differentiated between Victor and Jamie um, and therefore then sort of tailored her approach as a forensic psychologist to or was hoping to be able to or wanting to, um, you know, differently um because their motivations would be different and the thing about the i found that quite interesting you know about there being a needing to be a leader um and yeah so and needing to approach them differently in terms of bringing out a uh, an escape i, I think I, I saw, sorry I was gonna say, they focus so much on jamie and little less on victor that i always thought that at some point there's going to be this twist at the end where it actually Jamie's sort of the psychopath and the leader and controlling it and driving it forward. But that never materialised and it actually was Victor. But because of the focus was so much on Jamie, I just kept thinking, is there something more here? Is there a twist here? And you know, the twist obviously was PTB, but you know, what, what more is it? What more is it? You know, but um, it, that, that kept me gripped as well. So it was good. What did you think about the fact that Jamie's mum actually gave up on him, if you like, and decided that he was already dead, that there was nothing that mm. she could do to stop yeah, him? Yeah, she couldn't talk yeah. him out of it. That's right. I, I, I mm. found that quite moving and quite... Mm. Uh, 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 yes, yes, the fact that she yeah. did suddenly say, I don't think there's anything I can do to save him. That's mm. that. Mm. I, uh, I that found was really that quite strange. Happy. Yeah, I found it strange. I mean, I'm not a parent, so I maybe can't... I can't speak from that sort of side of things, but you know, she went quite quickly. I felt it was very moving um, to kind of from defending him to know he can't possibly be to then giving up on him. Yeah. So I think that aspect didn't mm -hmm. quite work for me. I don't probably... know if I would ever give up on my son, uh, but he's never pushed me quite that far. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope he never does. Yeah. Well, given that it takes place in three hours, it had to happen quickly. So, yeah, that's, true. <laughs> so that's perhaps slightly unrealistic, but yeah. Yeah, I think I like to think I'd hold up for more than three hours. <laughs> yes. I must admit, the bit that I thought was possibly the most moving bit was, although I felt it slowed down the time timing a bit, um, was when Rafi was talking about his journey over, over and especially when the little boy. Um, is trying to doggy paddle to the boat because the man doesn't take him and I was oh, oh you've got to make it you've got to make it, <laughs> it was, I thought that was very moving mm. it's, um, and very well written um, but what, what I thought did did anybody else pick up I don't know maybe I was overly sensitive but it was interesting because they made such a big case about the school which was a private school clearly you know with the fees and things and that it was so liberal and had liberal values and all this kind of thing and then yet the parents when when Jamie's mum is listening there to the parents talking they were like oh do you think it's because of those boys that the the muslim boys that they picked up do the the syrian refugees that we picked up do you think that it's those uh, islamic terrorists and so on when they don't yet know what it is so it was quite interesting that quite a few of the parents didn't really espouse those liberal values that it seems their children really were showing because of going to that school I must admit, I I thought that was. I thought I thought that was the authors wanted to get her viewpoint in there, and and that's why that was there. Mm. Um, I thought, you know, there were certain things she clearly wanted to say, um, albeit through her characters, and it's, sometimes it was obvious and sometimes not quite so obvious. But I found that a little bit. I won't say off-putting because I enjoyed the book. It was a cracking story. It got straight into the action since it opened up, you know, on page one. <laughs> um, but I found that a little bit off putting, um, I think, for want of a better word. Has anybody got anything else they want to uh, talk about with the book? 
Does anyone know, um, I didn't have time to sort of look Google or look up uh, to see if she'd written any interviews or the, any articles and does anyone know what was her motivation for writing it and what has she said about it and anyone well, know? There are a whole heap of acknowledgements at the back. Yeah. And I think it was, I think it was a collaborative effort between her and a number of people if I'm honest. There's nothing on the website, on her website. Has anybody read um, The Silence Between Breaths by Kath Staincliffe? No. No. Um, it really made me think of it. That is um, characters on a train and one of the characters is a suicide bomber and it's from the viewpoints of all the different characters before the bomb goes off, including from the viewpoint of the suicide bomber, and then when the bomb goes off, and also the aftermath. And it, it had kind of a very similar vibe to this, with lots mm. of characters and the different motivations. I think if, if people enjoyed this, they'd probably enjoy that mm, one as sounds well. Sounds really good. Well, the sort of timeline this is Thanks, happening. Rachel. It's Okay, brilliant. Anybody got anything else? I read this um, just uh, thinking about the aspect about sort of radicalization and grooming and why people get sucked into. I read this book just after reading Mark Edwards' um, recent one um, about a cult. And so it was really quite interesting to, you know, to look at things. It was a kind of different kind of cult and being groomed and radicalized into um, but I find that aspect, the sort of the psychology of uh, persuasion and conformity and obedience and, you know, I find that just absolutely fascinating. Mm. Excuse me, someone at the door. It's nice meeting you over at Discussion Local to the next one. Bye. Yeah, you too, Norman.